Hallo, ich bin Alex und willkommen zu Super Make Something, die Show, wo ich euch zeige, wie man coole Sachen baut. Heute benutzen wir einen 3D-Drucker, um einen Bierkrug mit Deckel zu fabrizieren und um Fliegen aus eurem Dosenbier zu halten. Los geht's! First, some Bierstein history. The invention of the Bierstein can be traced back to southern Germany around the year 1500, where it is still common to consume beer in beer gardens that are often shaded by large chestnut trees. To keep out leaves, dirt, and the occasional falling chestnut, beer mugs were covered with lids. While early lids were made out of felt, which was unhygienic and required the use of two hands to hold the mug and remove the lid, later mugs incorporated a hinged metal lid, which was both more sanitary and enabled one-handed operation. Thus, the Bierstein was born. Since the design of a can already keeps large falling objects out of your drink pretty well, our Canstein is primarily designed to keep flies and wasps from crawling into your can when it is left unattended. This Canstein is designed in CAD and consists of the following components. A lid to cover the can opening, a lever to pivot the cover with your thumb, a stem to hold the can stein, a clamp to hold the can in place, and two thumb screws to tighten the clamp around the can. The can stein components are manufactured using 3D printing. First, the can stein components are exported from the CAD software into a slicing program. This program analyzes the components and generates G-code that tells the printer how to create each object one layer at a time. The G-code is then transferred to the 3D printer, causing the print head to move through a series of waypoints. This particular printer uses a process called fuse deposition modeling, where molten plastic is extruded out of a print head as it travels across the print bed. Several other 3D printing processes exist, but this is the most common process for non-industrial printers to date. While the printing process looks fast in these time lapses, each video is actually sped up significantly. The total print time for all components was approximately 10 hours. In total, the 3D printer made 8 components. Due to limitations of my 3D printer size, the stem needed to be split up into two parts. To ensure that all the pieces fit together during assembly, sand all of the pieces with a fine grit sandpaper. Sanding removes small imperfections resulting from plastic droop that occurred during the printing process. Stop sanding once the parts seem to fit together smoothly. This may take a few tries, but resist the urge to use a coarse grit sandpaper since this could ruin the surface finish of the printed parts. The components are glued together with epoxy. This particular epoxy only takes 5 minutes to dry, so I mixed up several small batches throughout the assembly instead of one large batch at the beginning. Begin by combining the two-part mixture using a stir rod. Then apply a little bit of epoxy in the notch at the bottom of the clamp and to the nub on the stem bottom. Press the nub into the notch and clamp the two pieces together. Wipe off any excess epoxy and set these pieces aside. While the stem and clamp are drying, assemble the thumb screws. The thumb screws are made by gluing a 40mm long M3 hex bolt into one of the 3D printed cylinders. A pattern to constrain the hex bolt is embedded in the cylinder to keep it in place after it is glued. Apply epoxy to both pieces and carefully insert the hex end of the bolt into the cylinder, making sure that it is straight. Repeat for the other thumb screw. Once the epoxy on the stem and clamp is dried, remove the clamp and glue on the top of the stem. Again, make sure that the bottom and top stems align with each other and wipe off any excess epoxy. The other end of the clamp has features that allow two M3 hex nuts to be glued into it. These will keep the thumb screws in place when they are tightened. Apply some epoxy to the hex nuts and clamp and push the nuts into the clamp using the threaded end of a thumb screw. When you are done, the hex nut should be embedded into the clamp like this. Time to mate the two clamps together using the thumb screws. Carefully insert the thumb screw through the hole in the back clamp and thread it into the hex nut on the front clamp. Do not tighten it all the way yet, just enough to get it started. Repeat this for the second thumb screw. Insert an empty can into the clamps and tighten the thumb screws. This can will be be used to align the lid in the next step. Place the lid onto the can with the indent facing towards the stem. Pin the lever to the stem using a 20mm long M3 bolt. Slide the clamp along the can until the notched end of the lever rests in the lid indent. Then, apply some epoxy to both pieces and press them together with your thumb until the epoxy sets. This is one of the reasons it's good to use 5 minute epoxy. Once the epoxy dries, your can stein is done. Crack open a cold beer and congratulate yourself on a job well done. Wunderbar! While the can stein was designed with beer in mind, it can of course be used for any canned beverage. If you're interested in building this project yourself, you can download the can stein components from Thingiverse. If you don't have a 3D printer but would still like to build the project, you can also order the can stein components from Shapeways. You can find the links to both the Thingiverse and Shapeways pages in the video description below. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching, now go super make something. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more videos. To keep up with the latest episodes, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out all of my other videos by clicking on the video to the right and follow me on Twitter at SuperMakeSMTHNG. See you next time! Now go Super Make Something!